So we're here at the training facility now and we're looking specifically at one control valve being the Bermad Model 720 pressure reducing valve. The purpose of this video presentation is to give confidence to users or operators if they're coming to a valve like this for the first time to understand what the individual components actually mean, how they operate and how they interact with one another in order to achieve a pressure reducing function. The idea of the valve is that if we're trying to maintain 50 meters of downstream pressure, we don't care what the upstream pressure is, that can be variable to a degree, but we must maintain constant pressure downstream. We don't care what the flow is traveling through the valve, so we, regardless of what the flow is, if it's 20 liters per second or one liter per second, we still want to maintain a constant pressure downstream. And that's the overall brain of the product or the pressure reducing valve itself. So the first thing to understand if you're coming to a control valve of this nature for the first time is how do we commission the valve and how do we get it fit for purpose when we uh, first want to start and operate the valve. The, the process I suggest is as follows. We should always isolate pressure on the downstream side of the valve or the outlet side of the valve to avoid any water traveling into the water main or wherever it's traveling. So we're assuming in this instance that the downstream valve is closed. We open the upstream valve to allow water pressure to come into the valve itself. And we're preparing the valve now for uh, it, its operation as a pressure reducing valve. The first step that we take is that we close the downstream ball valve. The purpose of the downstream ball valve is to isolate water going to the downstream side of the valve, but it's also used to manually close the valve. So by closing this valve, it only allows water to stay on the cover of the valve and the valve stays closed. Now we have water pressure through an opened uh, isolating valve, which is now coming up, traveling through a cartridge filter, through the cartridge filter, through a needle valve. Now the position of the needle valve when we first want to set the, the product up is to close the needle valve fully and back it off approximately one and a half turns. Now the purpose of the needle valve in a two-way control loop as shown in this model 720 is to affect the performance of the valve. It affects the closing and the opening speed and by modifying it one way or the other we can influence how the valve reacts, depending how we need to do it in the field. The water then travels onto the cover of the valve and we have an isolating valve on the bonnet here. And this valve should be open when we first start to allow water now to travel onto the cover of the valve. It's really important on any diaphragm actuated control valve that we always release any air from the cover of the valve. So I have a secondary valve situated here, which is just venting to atmosphere, which I'm going to use and demonstrate now when I open this ball valve slowly, a small amount of water will discharge and discharges any air from the control chamber. When the water leaves the control chamber, the water runs through the two way balanced pressure reducing pilot, which then travels to the downstream side of the valve in this tube here. So. The first thing that we do, the pilot and what is its purpose? The pilot basically is the brain of the valve and this is the product that determines how much water leaves and enters the control chamber to try to maintain a constant downstream pressure. We have an adjustment bolt in the top of the valve in here with a spring inside and we have a balancing spring at the bottom. So right now, what we've done is that we've opened up the inlet ball valve. We've allowed water pressure to come through the filter, through the needle valve and onto the cover. And we've ensured that the water is now traveling through to the pilot, but the valve is remaining closed because the ball valve is closed here. When I open the inlet, the outlet ball valve, I'm now exposing the downstream side of the valve to the underside of the pilot. Now what the pilot does 
when I apply tension to the top of the spring, the passage in the pilot opens and allows water to run to the downstream side of the valve. So, um, this is how we prepare the valve for first operation. It's very, very important when we first start that the valve is drip tight closed and we removed all the air from the chamber of the valve. Now for demonstrating purposes, we're showing the inlet, outlet and bonnet valve with a yellow handle. We want the yellow handle valves to be normally opened. The flushing ball valve here, just to remove the air off the cover, is blue in color, which we're identifying as normally closed. Now, if you don't have a flushing ball valve on the cover, the other option to remove entrapped air from the top of the valve is to go to the highest point in the control valve. In this case, it's immediately downstream of the cover and just slowly relax the fitting and wriggle the tube till all the air comes out. Here we can see water dripping from the valve. And when we're sure that all the air has been uh, emitted out of the chamber and the milky water's gone, we simply tighten the fitting and the valve is now ready for operation. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to have the pump started and I'm just going to continue. And what's important now is we identify and we see these pressure gauges. Okay, so we've demonstrated how to prepare the valve ready for operation. And we've now eliminated all the air from the control chamber. We're now ready to set the PRV to run into the system. We have the downstream isolation valve closed. And really importantly, the first thing we have to do is to turn the adjustment bolt on the pilot anti-clockwise completely to ensure that the valve is drip tight closed before the valve starts. When we turn the bolt anti-clockwise, we're telling the brain or the pilot of the valve to maintain zero pressure. The effect of that is that it closes the passage and ensures the valve is closed. So now I'm going to open the downstream valve. The valve is opened and we can see that we now have about 120 meters of upstream pressure and zero pressure downstream. When we put our adjustment our shifter on our adjustment bolt here, if I start to turn the adjustment bolt clockwise and I apply tension to the spring, as soon as I apply some tension to the spring, the passage in the pilot opens, allows water to travel to the downstream side of the valve, and here we can see we're now applying five meters of water pressure to the downstream side of the valve. It's very important when you're applying pressure to a pipeline that you do it very slowly and carefully because you could be pressurizing hundreds or thousands of meters of pipeline that have to pressurize slowly and carefully. So we always suggest when you turn an adjustment bolt clockwise a small amount, let the valve open, let everything settle and let the, pi the pipeline pressurize slowly. And then over a controlled period of time, slowly increase the pressure of the valve by turning clockwise until you achieve the pressure that you're looking to, to achieve. Now, for the purpose of the video, I'm going to move this to 300 kPa, which we can see on the gauge now. In reality, if you were doing this in a pipeline, you would do this very slowly. But here we're at a fixed pressure of 300 kPa on the downstream side and we don't care what the upstream pressure is. So now it's time to make sure that the pressure reducing valve is working under different conditions. We know that if we alter the upstream pressure, the downstream pressure should remain the same. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reduce the upstream pressure, which we can see which we can see the upstream pressure now reducing, but the downstream pressure is remaining constant. So we are trying to achieve 300, and we are now reducing the upstream water pressure. Here we can see it coming down, coming down. We're now down to 400 kPa, and we're still achieving slightly less than 300 kPa here in the valve. 
When I increase the pressure again, the valve should come back to its set point. Now, that's altering the upstream pressure. If we modify the flow, the valve should also maintain at 300 kPa. Now, one of the unique features of the Bermad valve is that they are the only valve in Australia to be accredited to the Australian standard, which is AS5081. And one of the tests which we have to perform for that standard is to show the valve working at a variety of flow conditions. When we fit the valve, in this instance here, with a balanced two-way pilot with the combination of a U-port, which fits inside the actuator inside the valve in here, we can take the valve comfortably down to zero flow and still maintain a constant pressure within about one and a half meters of tolerance. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. Here we can see an upstream pressure of 700 kPa. We're looking at the downstream pressure of 300. And slowly I'm going to reduce the flow and the pressure on the downstream side of the valve should remain constant. So now, as I reduce the flow, we can see the upstream pressure increasing, but the downstream pressure remains a constant. As I continue to turn it slowly, it's still maintaining the same pressure. Here we're now up to around about 1100 kPa, still at 300 downstream. And as I continue to shut the flow off, I'm going to take it all the way to zero. So what I've just demonstrated now, the flow is at zero, the flow meter has stopped turning. We now have 1200 kPa or 120 meters of pressure here and we've stayed within the three meter tolerance on the downstream side of the valve. This is a critical aspect of any control valve to show and demonstrate how it's going to work in a pressure main. And here we've demonstrated in a four inch valve but the same feature applies to all of the range of the valves up to 600 millimeter and greater in our valves. So we've just demonstrated exactly varying pressure upstream, varying flow going through the valve, and maintaining a constant downstream pressure being the pressure reducing valve. The Bermad Model 720.